Well, as we continue to anticipate uh, the State of the Nation address by President Cyril Ramaphosa, let's head back to uh, Cape Town. Gareth Edwards standing by the mother city ahead of SONA 2023. And G, what do you have for us? Uh, good to have you back with us, Tumza. Welcome to mm. everyone who's just joined us. Uh, just across the road from what's an almost completed and ready uh, city hall for this evening, of course, the ordinary home uh, for the National Assembly and for Sona uh, in that devastating fire last year, too badly damaged uh, down the road from us as well. So this is the home for Sona for this evening. And I'm about to speak to someone who's been uh, very much in the camera lenses since that issue and will be presiding over uh, the proceedings later this evening. Speaker of Parliament, Nosaviwe. Mapisa and Makula to joining us on the show. Speaker, good to have you. Uh, so you've just walked out from the National Assembly. So the obvious question, how ready are we? How's it looking? It looks good. We're very ready. And I'm sure all South Africans in their hearts and minds are also ready to receive uh, the State of the Nation address. It's a very important day in the calendar of the Republic of South Africa. And it's an important day in any calendar of a country that has a state which is government. I had Amos Mosondo with me uh, about a half an hour ago, Speaker, NCOP chairperson, of course, for those who missed the interview. And I was asking him about this expected disruption. It's something we've seen before. I, I would love to get your thoughts on how is it going to be handled. Yes, there's rules and regulations as to how this should be handled. Now that we know that there is this threat of a disruption as the president starts talking, has that changed the way you're going to handle tonight? <laughs> I think let's leave it for this evening. We will not allow for SONA to be disrupted to an extent where we will not have the State of the Nation address. We are not a banana republic. People are expected to express their views about whatever it is that they are unhappy about. People have a right to express. There will be a debate following the State of the Nation address, and therefore, let us give the space to this occasion where then the president appears before parliament in the presence of both the legislature and the judiciary and addresses the nation about the plans the state has, government has, of dealing with some of the challenges which we have identified, which we acknowledge, which we have, and how we are going to proceed as a country in this coming year. I think it is fair that anyone, in order for you to understand that it's not just us as citizens who can who identify some of the challenges which we have as a nation. Everybody, in order to appreciate that, government is also listening to the issues which are raised by South Africans. It will emerge from the program which the president will outline today. Remember, this session, is meant to allow the president to say, these are the commitments we made in the past year. These are the commitments I made through the State of the Nation address last year. And this is how far we have gone. And now we are committing to you to do the following, to ensure that commitments which we have made over time and will be accelerated in implementing the program will be implemented it will be accelerated in implementing those commitments uh, one of the bigger issues uh, i'm sure speaker you'll agree is uh, the talk of blackouts and load shedding I, I would imagine that the national assembly will have their backup systems generators ups's whatever it might be as well the real unfortunate element is that if there is load shedding a lot of the South African population won't be able to watch. Do we know if I'm load shedding is going to be suspended? I am praying and I'm hoping that South Africans will be able to watch this event. Do we know if it's I been know. suspended? Well, I don't shedding? know. I don't know about that. Uh, if, if there is any form of suspension of load shedding, I wouldn't have been part of such discussions. But from the side of Parliament here, with the assistance of the city of Cape Town, we have a backup system which will ensure that we are not affected by the schedule of load shedding. Now, I want to go back to what you said. Every member of parliament, once you land in parliament, the first thing that is given to you, it is the constitution of the republic and the rules book. 
we've all been sworn. We take an oath of office, and that is commitment to the Constitution of the Republic. But also, attached to that, in a sense, are your rules of Parliament, which are developed by us as members of, of Parliament, but also adopted by ourselves as members of Parliament. And therefore, we have an obligation to comply with those rules of Parliament. And my plea, therefore, to all those who are threatening to disrupt is to say, this is a rare occasion where you bring the three arms of the state under the same roof, where the president then announces this program of action, which all of us are looking forward to, and how it is going to be implemented, and how some of the commitments which we're not able to implement, that those commitments will again be put on the table and the president will clarify that which he is directing ministers to do. And hopefully the country is able to watch it uninterrupted either from protests inside or from the power issue as Absolutely. well, Speaker. Absolutely. I would like to ask you, obviously I imagine the list for who's attending has been finalised. It would be yes, fair to say that. Yes, it has been. Uh, is the Deputy President, David Mabuza, going to be in attendance? As far as I know, the Deputy President is supposed to be here. Look, we have not received a resignation letter. I can say this now without any fear of contradiction as Speaker, Parliament has not received a letter which informs us that the Deputy President is no more a member of Parliament. As far as we are concerned, he is still a member of Parliament and I am expecting in terms of the procession, as you would know, the Deputy President will be expected to be here. So. There are a lot of things which are going on, stories which we hear, but as speaker, speaking in, in my position now as a presiding officer, I verified up until this morning, I have not as yet received a letter which gives me different information. So the Deputy President is expected to be here. Minister, I want to ask you just two more things. I would like to talk about Parliament in a moment, the actual building. I'll get there in a second before I say goodbye to you as well. Uh, can we talk about uh, a Sipaman Lagoge informing me that there is a Cabinet meeting underway? Possible announcement of a state of disaster for the blackouts? Are you aware? What can you tell me? I'm not aware of a Cabinet uh, meeting. It's probably going on. It's fine. I'm not I mean, I'm, I'm heading another arm of the state. What I would imagine is that in all of the cabinet meetings which we've had lately, including the cabinet Lehuta itself, which was held last week, I would imagine one of the issues which are uppermost in the discussions of the executive would be how we are going to be dealing with this issue of load shedding. Mind you, it is not the only issue. Yes, it is impacting negatively on everybody across the board. But of course, one of the issues about South Africa is poverty and the performance of our economy. And therefore, I would imagine that cabinet would have been seized with that. How are we going to feed ordinary people? We've, we've, we've remember, there are certain things which we have the country has done, let me not say we, because as parliament we exercise oversight. Minister of Social Development has been giving out allocated, allocated some money to assist people who cannot, who just cannot come out of that COVID space and the challenges imposed by that space. Now, the load shedding thing is affecting everybody. It is affecting business. It is affecting small business people. I have seen, I watched on TV, how some factory which produces cheese and other things is affected and they've had to spill the, oil, the milk which was there. I've seen how people are operating in a space where they are using refrigerators and they cannot keep that food. And I'm talking now small business. So the impact of load shed shedding is negative for all of us. And I think that it's not time for polemics. Polemics should just come to an end. We put things aside and just agree on a single program of how we are going to deal with this such that South Africans are happy.
could a state of disaster achieve that if it went that far? You can't say whether a meeting is taking place on it, but your thoughts, would a, are we at a point you of know, a state of disaster? You know, if it has been identified as a state of disaster and it has been announced as such, it allows, the state of disaster actually allows for the president to be, to have command, to command all the forces which should be dealing with this particular issue. Yes, under normal circumstances, you would have wanted the minister responsible for that to deal with the issues. But of course, in the course of that, the minister will be at the helm of briefing the president on a regular basis. State of disaster actually just allows for accountability on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. about where we are in implementing decisions which are taken. I know that I was part of the National Command Council during the COVID period. And I have seen the value, the value of having a national state of disaster because it allows for accountability on a daily basis by ministers. It also allows for accountability on a daily basis by the bureaucrats themselves. It keeps your, you keep, it helps you keep your finger on the pulse about developments in relation to what where you are trying to deal with. Let me ask you this, uh, just in closing, uh, Minister, and we can talk about the parliamentary building as well, where we are on that, but I'd like to ask you this. Uh, could this be your last State of the Nation address as Speaker? Would you like to stay on? I understand there's deployments, I understand all that. Could this be your last State of the Nation address? Are you, are you the outgoing Speaker? Is that your expectation? I don't know. But anyone who is deployed in a particular area, you have a wish that you finish your term. And for people to look behind you and see what footprints you are leaving. In my view, definitely, I would want to sit through my term and the term of this parliament ends next year with an election. That's a couple of months down the line. But of course, if somebody decides somewhere to, to take a decision, Contrary to our wishes, right, my wishes, I would gladly comply with that. I always say, Gareth, to anyone who talks to me, I know some people were saying the other time, why, why, why did you have to move from there? It's, it's not your choice. Mm. But of course, you can express your views as an individual. But for me, there was a time where I, I never knew I would ever I would become a member of parliament, that I would become a minister, or that I would become a speaker. I was just an ordinary activist of the African National Congress, my party. And my commitment has always been to the African National Congress. So if the African National Congress decides tomorrow, hey, hey, your service is not needed anymore, it does not mean that my activism the fact that I'm a politician who came into the ANC when I was 25, it does not mean that the ANC does not require my services anymore. It means that it will be moving me from here and they'll be giving me an opportunity to go and stay at home and continue to be the activist I was who joined the African National Congress when it was not fashionable to do so, who joined the African National Congress when there was no position, when there was no salary, who understood when coming into the ANC that I am here to serve the people of South Africa. Uh, I need to say goodbye to you in just a moment, Speaker. So you've, you've been very kind with your time. Just very quickly, obviously we're not at the parliamentary building. Two billion rand is the estimated budget. Where are we on the timeline to get back into the parliamentary building? Oh, no, no. We look, Gareth, we, I, can, I can say definitely, in three years' time, we will be inside the parliamentary building. Why I'm saying this, the fact that, one, there's a commitment now from the Minister of Finance that this two billion which will be allocated for this, the fact that he has started giving out allocation for this coming year for us to do certain things, the fact that already on site now we have a multidisciplinary team that is assisting us to plan on how to restore or, or even rejuvenate parliament again. The fact that we now know the figures that, for instance, we will start with the old assembly 
and proceed to deal with the National Assembly. The fact that we know how much it will cost, right, to restore that old assembly building, for obvious reasons, that's a heritage site. So it doesn't matter the debates that we may be having in our little corners about whether Parliament should move or not, mm. whether we should go back to that old building or not. The point is you have a heritage site which you need to restore. And then going forward from there, you can discuss other things, but we have an obligation to restore our building, which is Parliament. And I believe that in three years' time, because for now the debates are at 20, within 24 months, mm. the walls will be up, the structure will be up, and we'll probably spend the rest of the year dealing with the internal fittings of Parliament, which will be your furniture, your IT systems, and so on. So. The program as it is, as it stands, is very promising and I have confidence in the abilities of those who are leading that process. And I appreciate your time in joining me Thank this morning, you. Speaker. All the very best for this evening. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, as well, there's an expectation that uh, the Speaker's going to have to do a lot more than just preside, of course, but we've got the thoughts of Nosaviwe Mapisa and Makula uh, joining us as to what the expectation is. Sona uh, is ready for this evening. Tumza, I believe I'm going to come back to you as we talk about this, as we release the Speaker to head off back into uh, the National Assembly, uh, very much centre of all the action uh, later tonight. Our own going coverage will begin from around midday today and of course the speech itself, the State of the Nation address by the President Tomelo uh, will be 7 o'clock tonight here on ENCA. Tumza, I understand I'm coming back to you in Johannesburg. All right, well, thank you so much, G, for that conversation. And sure, three years, South Africans will have to wait until they see those familiar features of Parliament. Because some have been saying that the Captain City Hall is just not the same. But I guess uh, it will take some time, two billion rand, uh, to fix up uh, Parliament. According to the uh, Speaker, Nosofi Mabisa Ngagula, saying the Finance Minister has not shown commitment uh, with that regard.